Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vectorworks tutorial and today we're going to be looking at doing some amazing freeform 3D modelling. I've been inspired by some architecture that I've been looking at recently. This is the uh, Iron Man house over in South Africa which is unbelievable. I saw a really good YouTube video on this that I'd recommend to you and I was kind of thinking to myself how would I go about modelling some of the architecture and the style of uh, 3D that you see here. So let's jump into this tutorial and I think you'll enjoy some of the new tools that you might learn and basically some of the freeform sort of modeling capabilities that you may not be aware of that Vectorworks has in abundance. So without further ado let's jump into this new tutorial. Thanks for watching everybody and enjoy. So let's get started on this 3D modeling tutorial. So I'm just going to turn my grid off and basically go into my model and I'm going to create a circle nine meters wide in radius, so 18 meters diameter. I'm going to change to 3D and then just extrude down. Let's go down, say, minus a meter or up a meter. And basically, this is going to form the base of my model. Now, next up, I'm going to basically jump straight into a tool that you may not have used called the taper face tool. And what I'm going to do here is select the bottom edge. And basically that enables me to taper outwards or inwards this upper edge to create a really nice sort of uh, chamfered if you like curved form okay so that's looking good so the next thing i'm going to do is push and pull this vertical element there just to make that a little bit thicker on the base and finally one of my favorite tools is the shelling tool so already you can see that i've managed to shell out this hollow and basically i'm going to drag on some nice concrete onto this material and basically it looks great already once you get that material on there now i can scale up or scale down the concrete a little bit and rotate it as required very easily in the rendering tab of vectorworks Okay, so what we're going to do next is basically go for uh, another circle, but this time I'm going to use the automatic plane, generate a three-point circle and extrude up. Now just be careful, I don't want to add it uh, to the model as I did by mistake, so this time I'll do the same thing again and basically get my circle tool by three points, check on the automatic plane and instead of extruding up I won't add it this time. Okay, so that's a really good little tip you can add or not add. So now what we can do is use our shell tool, um, or taper rather, uh, before we do the shelling, to taper out this um, other circle element. Now just make sure you get the right positive or negative number when you're doing the tapering. Um, you can actually go both ways. So this is really cool. Okay, so now I'm going to go for something called the extracting tool. Make sure that if you do use the extract surface tool, you try and extract surfaces. And you can see I've extracted that surface and now basically I can delete that inner element or I can keep it. Now it can be a bit tricky to select. So what I've done is selected my NURB surface that I extracted and just made it blue so you can kind of read that a bit more clearly. So I often use groups in order to isolate things. Then I can double click, work inside the group and then basically pop back out when I'm ready. So what we're going to do is once again use our shell tool and we're going to change this uh, sort of shell thickness to about 500 mil and basically that means that I can now draw another inner circle and punch through using the subtract solid mode to create a really nice sort of hollowed out um, surface there. So next up I'm going to double click number four the rectangle tool and just generate a uh, sort of shape of a rectangle. Let's put it into the middle there by using the anchor point and select that into the middle. Pop it into that middle point and now basically I'm going to move it up and slightly intersect it. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second once I duplicate an array. So I'm going to go for a duplicate array with a circular array. Um, let's do about 12 sides. Let's do 360 divided by 12, so I'd have to work that out. Around the next mouse click and basically just make sure when you do that duplicate array that you do check the use rotation. There we go, rotate duplicates. So now when it rotates, it rotates nicely at that angle. Okay, so fantastic. So now what I can do is extrude those items. Um, just make sure that they're bigger than the uh, element that we're trying to intersect with. And I can go to um, subtract solids and basically you can see that I can essentially subtract those solids or if I want to, what I'm actually really keen to do is select them both. So select all and this time I will go to intersect. So that basically, instead of subtracting, it leaves me the bit where they intersect to create a nice little bit of structure uh, for my developing design here. So I can use my eyedropper tool um, if I'm careful just to kind of paste in the attributes, if you like, of the concrete for that group. So now what I'm going to do is basically use a really amazing command called the fillet tool. 
basically by selecting all the edges, even within the group, you'll notice that I can actually round them off. So that filleting works really nicely, even though all of those objects are one single object, essentially, because they're one solid subtraction. So let's pop out of the group and the model is coming on quite nicely. So next up, I'm going to basically create a, a large plane of glass. Um, so this is flat at the moment. So let's offset inside, say 50 mil. Um, and basically we'll select both and we'll do clip surface from my lovely command there. So next up, I'm going to extrude. I think we'll put 20 mil for the glass and let's select the uh, frame if you like. And let's extrude that maybe a little bit more, let's say 150. Let's use a couple of simple materials. So we'll have gray and also let's just put some glass material. So I'm gonna go over to my textures just apply some glass, some blue glass, if you like, into there. Okay, so I've got what could be something like a window now. We'll just move the uh, glass up to the middle there using the B key to see my X-ray view. So when I'm ready, I can select this element here and basically uh, select the surface. And now for an amazing command, which I think you'll love, I'm gonna go to something called Create Surface Array. So with the surface array, I can basically select some different numbers. And you can see that I've chosen to duplicate horizontally at around the number of repetitions there, 20, but I can increase that as much as I like dynamically. Let's try 30 um, and see how that looks. That looks a lot better. So this is a really, really great way to make things like curtain walling and planar glazing. Um, basically, especially when things are sort of leaning at angled, you know, it just basically took that element and repeated it around. Okay, so we're doing a little bit of work on the floor subtraction here. Um, I'm quite keen to basically get a stairway coming up into my tower here. So I'm going to go for my stair tool. And of course, Vectorworks has lots and lots of really wonderful stairs built in. And you will find circular stairs or spiral stairs. And you just need to kind of change those parameters as we're doing in the dialogue at the moment. So there's all sorts of things that we can change. Things like the stair width, the diameter, the inside diameter and so on as well. And basically when I click OK, let's just flick over to top plan and place that stair. You should see I've got a really nice spiral stair um, that I can basically position a bit more correctly vertically leading up to my wonderful little tower here. So this is very, very cool. Um, I can also edit things like some of the materials on that stair as well by going into the settings. Um, and I'll leave you to play around with that so it's a bit more detailed as well. So we need a bit of a landing here. So I'm just going to push and pull and extrude up my little landing. Let's just check the height. And of course, I can right click and add solids to join those together just to create that landing for the stair. So with a couple of more clicks, I can trace around a circle there. I could now basically offset to create what feels like a wall. Just there we go, using close open curbs and I can extrude up to basically give it a nice concrete material. So we've got a bit of a balustrading around. Now if I double click, I can go into the uh, profile and edit that and just basically add surface a couple of rectangles in order to kind of complete this. So right click, add surface, and then pop back out. There we go. So I've got a really nice little spiral stair leading up into my tower building. So next up, I think we need the roof element. So I'm just gonna draw that in plan and trace it over. So now I'm going to go back to plan. I'm going to use my offset tool and I'm going to decide by uh, point mode because I haven't quite decided what we're going to do yet. Let's turn off the close by uh, close open curves and basically let's extrude that up, say 1200 mil again. That's looking pretty good. So now we can go once again to that wonderful tapering command and put that nice little tapered angle there. OK, let's also um, increase the thickness a little bit of the shell and basically let's shell it by say 300 and then basically i'm just want to kind of create a slightly more vertical element to this sort of roof terrace if you like up on the top okay so i'm pretty happy with that um i do want to have a nice roof light punched in so i'm going to push and pull and basically extrude uh, through let me just use the b key just to check that's going through and then we select them both and we do um basically solid subtraction so that will create a nice hole with a roof light if I do want to, I can also go and do intersect by pasting in place. And now essentially I can use that um, and apply my glass to the intersection element. So with a few more clicks, we can drag on some nice materials of some concrete from our RenderWorks textures that we've already imported. So I'm gonna be basically extracting this surface so that I can extrude it and apply a nice green sort of turf material. 
just so we've got this nice sort of grass roof up there. Um, a couple double clicks, I can basically go in and copy out any elements inside like that solid subtraction. And if I do want to, once again, I use the circle by three points, which is incredibly useful. Let's offset it a little bit here, um, say 300, and let's punch in and clip surface. So now I can extrude this element up and basically uh, apply concrete to it. And finally, let's just pull it down a little bit and add solids so that it's joined on to that roof element. So we've got one bigger element on our roof. So as ever, it's always good to have a little spin around just to give your model a bit of a check over once in a while. Um, so here I'm gonna basically just work on the uh, sort of element below the tower itself. So leading up to the tower. So I've drawn a big circle and let's just sort of extrude that down in sections. Um, just make sure you go a negative extrusion if you want to go down rather than up. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, if you haven't used these smart options, I recommend that you go into your uh, basically preferences and just tune up so that you've got the tools uh, that you need to do the job where you want them. So now, for example, when I tap spacebar, I can do things like change view. I can also access my 3D views there. So what I'm going to do is pull this down about, say, 15 metres. Again, just make sure you go in the right direction and keep the negative if it is moving down. And what you can also do, even though it added, if I do want to, I could basically um, use the offset and the taper edge. And this time, you'll notice that I can taper out the whole uh, surface, which is really cool. So that's kind of looking good, that sort of tower tapering upwards. Next, I'm going to push and pull a little bit of vertical down at the bottom there. So I think what we need to do is pop up to top plan. Let's get a nice big circle for a base and we'll trace that around. Let's extrude it a little bit um, and then go into my side view and just sort of move it down just to give a nice sort of base to sit our tower on. So already you can see within a few minutes, this is looking pretty good. I've got a few nice textures and I've used quite a few of the more unusual form tools in our Vectorwitz to form uh, the model. So now we can start creating some viewports. Now I've got the design suite version, so I'm gonna create multiple viewports. Um, if you don't have this one, just create one at a time. But the benefit of creating multiple viewports is obviously that you get all four viewports uh, for one click, if you like. Now I've got a pretty big page, so I'm gonna reduce my page size just so we've got, say, two by two or four by four pages. And let's go ahead and click update with shaded mode. I'm gonna get myself a little bit more paper, just tiling those A3s together just to give myself a bit more space to lay out my drawings on. So I've gone back to the design layer and you'll see that if I get my clip cube and try and sort of cut a section through the model, at the moment, of course, the uh, sort of tower structure, if you like, is completely solid. So that was one thing I forgot to do. I just want to hollow it out using the um, shell solid surface. So that basically means I've got my stair inside, you can see now. So I'm gonna make the riser height a little bit bigger. I'm gonna give it a slightly bigger tread and let's go for um, a bigger number on the tread depth. Now I realized from experimenting, the biggest stair that you can have seems to be about 15 meters. Uh, it doesn't quite make it. So I can do one stair. Then I could obviously hold down the control key or the alt key on the Mac and basically copy another stair down. And obviously I could have another landing there in the middle as well. So now when I hold B down, you'll notice I've got stairs all the way through. Now this will really become apparent when I cut my section through. You see those wonderful spiral stairs going up my tower into the, the main sort of uh, top of the tower there, the control room as it were. So I've got a bit of a problem with the landing. I can fix that later with a, a landing or rotating the stair, but let's just carry on. And basically I'm gonna create a section, put this on the same sheet layer, and you see I've got this really, really nice sort of section drawing now featuring on my set of drawings. So we can basically align and distribute those. So let's just align them and equally space them just to kind of get our presentation absolutely spot on. And you see I've got not only a really nice sort of section that I did in top plan, I've got some sections of just the tower, but I've also got some sections of the model itself inside section. So we're almost done. Basically, I'm just gonna pop back to my design layer and delete that section line. I don't really want to see that at the moment. And basically, you'll see that I can basically move around in real time using the shaded mode and things like the walkthrough tool. Our little example of a cool little kind of control tower or something like that. Obviously, it needs a bit more work inside for sure. But I really do hope you've enjoyed uh, this tutorial just to show you how quick and easy 
It is to basically visualize your uh, weird ideas and sometimes modeling up things free form in Vectorworks is extremely fast. You know, I love all the BIM modeling and things like that that you can do with Vectorworks. I'm sure you've seen my other videos, but basically I really, really love the free form modeling. And sometimes I just think it's fantastic just to play around and model up something crazy uh, from your imagination just in order to have a little play and create something a bit creative that you wouldn't normally get to do on a day job, of course. You know, I've never been commissioned to design a tower like this before. So with a few final tweaks, I can basically turn on things like ambient occlusion and the things like shadowing, click updates. Um, of course, updating the sheet DPI is gonna make a much better image as well. But look at this, what a lovely, lovely section already generated of my cool little tower. Um, now I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do in this tower itself. I might you drop this into Twin Motion for another tutorial. But thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.